The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar near the plot of ground that Jacob had been given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that's saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and his flock that drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I give will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus told her, Go call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say the place that we must worship is in Jerusalem. And then Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming where you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews." But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. And just then his disciples came. And they were astonished to see that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? And the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. And she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And they stayed there for two days and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it's no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. This is a a really great gospel lesson. Uh, It's very timely for us, I think. There's a... um, one character that really stands out for me as I was studying it's a Samaritan woman. Um, so we're going to focus on her for a little bit. And we don't know her name. Now, the Greek Orthodox Church has built a church over Jacob's well named after her. And, that's, and I can't remember the name of her. But, um, but in Scripture, we don't know this woman's name. But we do know an awful lot about her by what Scripture tells us. So the story goes that Jesus is tired from his journey. He's going into Samaria, and he ends up going to this well. And he sits down, and the disciples leave to go get some food. And while he's sitting there, all of a sudden, this woman comes up to get water. And our scripture says it's noon, and she's by herself, and she's getting water. Now that right there tells us an awful lot. Because back then, you didn't get water at noon. You would get water early in the morning. And you wouldn't ever go by yourself. You would be with a group of women to go to the well to get the water for the day's work, for the day's meals, for the day's washing, all of the things that would need to be done. And so you would be traveling in a group because you would never be traveling alone. So she's going at noon and she's by herself. So clearly she does not fit in with this group or this group has outcast her because she's not welcome with them. And she's by herself. And so then Jesus looks at her and says, give me a drink. And then she says, why are you speaking to me? I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. Why are we talking to each other? And he says, if you knew who was talking, he would have given you living water. She says, are you greater than our ancestors, Jacob, who gave us this well? You don't even have a bucket. The well's deep. How are you? How am I supposed to get this living water? And he says, the water that I give is going to spring up inside of you a wellspring 
of eternal life. It's going to gush forth from you. And she says, I want that water. How do I get that water? And this is when Jesus pauses and says, why don't you go get your husband so that way we're not talking to each other alone because that's not supposed to happen. And then she says, I have no husband. And Jesus says, you're right. You don't. You've had five. And the one you're with is not your husband right now. We're going to take a break real quick. In the 21st century, if we found out that somebody here or somebody anywhere had five husbands in the past and is now with somebody that's not their husband, we would have a name for that person. We would create a meme. I mean, there would be a lot of fun poked at that person. That person would be considered kind of an outcast from society. Something's wrong with that lady. We go back to the time of Jesus. The Samaritan woman... She didn't divorce all these men. That wasn't what she did. She was divorced by these men. She was dismissed by these men. A woman at that point in time was not considered an equal. It was considered a property. She was there to create children, to provide home. She may not have been able to do those things for the first husband, and she was dismissed. For the second husband, she was dismissed. And one after the other after the other, all of a sudden, she's ostracized. She's an outcast. She's not welcome into anyone's even home. And she's at this well, and she looks at Jesus and says, you clearly know an awful lot about me. I've heard that there's this prophet, this Messiah, that is Christ to come. And that's when Jesus says for the first time in the Gospel of John, I am he. Echoing the words of Moses at the burning bush, I am. He'll go on to say this, a total of seven times in the Gospel of John. But the first time is to this outcast, to this most unlikely person that is not welcomed in groups of her peers, is not welcomed in the family home, and that has to go at noon to get water by herself. And Jesus says, I am. She is so excited that she has met the Messiah that she drops her bucket and runs back to tell her town folk. The people that have ostracized her, the people that don't welcome her. And she runs into the middle of them and says, I've seen him. He knew everything about me. I've seen the Messiah. And something about her makes all of them start to believe immediately. Her whole deportment is shouting. Her eyes, her her everything. I imagine she's glowing like Moses or like Jesus in transfiguration. They can't help but see God in her. They can't help but see Christ in her that they come to believe. And they want to be with Jesus. And they invite Jesus. And Jesus stays with them for two more days. And more people come to believe. It's an amazing story. The most unlikely character that Jesus first presents as the Messiah too. Now this story is paired with another story. And we heard it last week. They're they're beautifully balanced together, and it's a story of Nicodemus, and Pastor Heather gave a great sermon on it. If you didn't see it, go online and take a look at it. But Nicodemus is a Jew. Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He's almost like the Pharisee of the Pharisees, right? He's the top dog. He's married, probably has a family, a nice place to live, but he also wants to find out if Jesus is the Messiah, and he's eager for this, so he's going to go question Jesus. But when does Nicodemus go to see Jesus. Anybody remember? At night. Oh, Nicodemus tiptoeing through town. He doesn't want to be seen. So he's going to go see Jesus to find out if this is the true thing. And then he gets into a conversation with Jesus. And there's this arguing going back and forth. And this uh, questioning about uh, born again. And then, of course, Jesus gives the great 316. But our focus was on 317. That God did not come to condemn, send his son to condemn the world. But that the world might have life through him. And then what does Jesus do? Goes straight to the Samaritan woman that's been condemned and gives her life. It's beautiful the way these two things balance off each other. Now the thing is, the gospel writer for John, the whole gospel was written, and it says in the very end that it was written that you may come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and have life in his name. Well, the gospel writer is living up to this in chapter 3 and 4 of John. But the people he's writing to are people that are really wrestling. They're having a hard time with who they are and where they're at in life because they've been kicked out of the synagogue. They're not welcome in the place that they knew. They've been outcast. And they believe that Jesus is the Messiah. These other people don't. And they're fighting. There's quarreling. There's wrestling going on, which is really wonderful that we also have our Old Testament lesson from Exodus. Did you hear 
What happened in Exodus today when Moses is in the wilderness, the people have just received manna from heaven, and now they're wrestling, quarreling with Moses, saying we're thirsty. And Moses starts praying, God, these people are going to kill me. What do I do? And God says, hit that rock with your stick. And what happens? Water. And they have life. But funny enough, they're not happy about that either. They're still quarreling. Is God even for us kind of language? So here, the gospel writer is reminding them not only of their ancestors and how we quarreled in the wilderness, but how, how people were quarreling even in this gospel, trying to figure out if Jesus was the Messiah. And it's the one that just ultimately just believes. Now, Nicodemus does eventually come to believe, doesn't he? We learned last week that, yes, at the very end of the gospel, he brings spices for the burial of Jesus, and he shows up, and he believes. We call that the educational variety. It took him time to get there, right? It took him a little bit of time. My dad would tell me, he said, Steve, you might miss the exit a few times, but you'll get there. So Nicodemus was kind of this educational variety, whereas the Samaritan woman, burning bush, immediately, faith, immediately agrees. So the gospel writer is giving this so that way they would just come to believe. They would stop their quarreling and their bickering. And to really drive the point home, the gospel writer puts something in there that's nowhere else in Scripture, and that's Jacob's well. I'm serious. You can look anywhere in Scripture. You won't find it anywhere else. Jacob does get a, a plot of land. It's presumed that he would have to build a well on it to get water on that land, but there's never any conversation about an actual well anywhere, just in the gospel of John. So why draw attention to that? What story do we know about Jacob? Anybody? He wrestled with God. And his name was changed to Israel. The gospel writers looking at his readers, his community. Why are we wrestling? Why are we quarreling? Jesus is offering us living water. And this living water will gush up inside of us and spring forth to eternal life. We have something to give to the world. Why are we wrestling? Why are we quarreling? Well, thank goodness none of us are quarreling today, right? The, it's not like this gospel has anything at all to say to us in 2023, right? You all may be quarreling with someone, something. You might be wrestling with some issue, some institution, anything. We all have those things. Today we're invited to take those and leave them at the well to drop whatever it is that we're wrestling with and accept the living water and let it rise up in us. Let it gush forth from us. Let us go out to the world to share that with others. And I'll tell you how easy it is for this to work, how this living water thing really works. I want you to, if you're willing, for five seconds, I want you to look at somebody close to you and I want you to look at them in their eyes. Five seconds, turn to somebody and look at somebody right in their eyes. And I want you to try to see Christ in their eyes for five seconds. Can you see Christ looking back at you? Because if you can, you've just given a gift to that person. You have given them Christ as well. Can we go out to the world and see the next person and look at them as if Christ is looking back at us? Because if we can, we are living water. We are gushing forth. We are spreading something that is absolutely amazing, and it provides eternal life for all. Some of us, it's going to take us a while to get there. We may be of the educational variety. Others may be a burning bush moment. It makes no difference. We are called to be living water out into the world. Can we take it out there in our service to others? Amen.